I've tried my best since this to do good things and positive things with my life that um, can also benefit John. Um, I spent numerous hours doing community service and I've also attended a victim impact panel. Um, like Sean Chimura said, uh, I, I've taken part in um, helping the fund, um, the J&J &J Recovery Fund, um, John and John. Um, I've helped the fund raise money to support 15 different charities and um, the main one that I'm involved with is the John and John Recovery Fund. Um, to date, we've raised almost $60,000 to benefit brain trauma research and brain stem cell research. And also part of that money is um, directly for John Graziano and his care. I pray and hope every day that there's something that I can do to help the situation and um, help uh, go towards uh, making it all the better that I can. Um, I feel that I can make a difference on people of all ages and especially people uh, my age, teenagers, my peers, to make um, smarter decisions and to understand the responsibilities of driving and safety. I'm actually here defending both of my brothers. I'm defending my blood brother. And I'm defending my brother who might as well be good blood. I realize the seriousness of what has happened that I've been heartbroken over seeing one of the people who I've loved the most injured and seeing my brother Nick saddened by every minute because he misses his best friend. I'm here to make my, my family's relationship with John clear. My brother and John met at a Toyota Supra event and since then they've been inseparable. They eat together, play video games together, work on cars together, laugh together and support each other. I know my brother Nick loves John with all of his heart. I know that if John could stand here beside me right now, he'd make all this stop. He'd also be very disappointed in some people, Your Honor. True love is turned into a personal war because of superficial influence. And people who are here today for John were not always this faithful to him before. And that's straight to me from John. Your Honor, I'm not here to be sweet or smooth things over. I'm not here to point fingers either. Like Debbie said in the beginning, these were two boys, two best friends having fun together. And now it's two families just going through heartache. Your Honor, miracles happened in the beginning because of this accident, and we became closer to John's family than ever. I'm extremely disappointed that friends are now becoming enemies. This is why I hate being a celebrity. And this is why I think they say that money is the root of all evil. This is not personally what I believe is in the hearts of my loved ones or in John's loved ones. And I'm positive that it's not in John's. Thank you. We would ask your honor to impose a sentence of three years uh, and we would uh, request uh, a, a three year probationary sentence. And um, that uh, we, we would request that you uh, not impose county jail time as recommended by the uh, probation department. But if you do decide that it is um, uh, necessary to impose an incarcerative condition of probation, we would ask that it be substantially less than the six months that is being requested by uh, most of the Graziano family. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, Counselor. I want to make sure that we're all keeping our eye on the ball here because what I'm hearing a lot about is the relationship between John Graziano and Nicholas Balea. And I don't think that there's any doubt that they were close, that their families were close, and I don't think there's any doubt that they were like brothers to each other. There's no doubt about that. But this case is and will always be about the defendant's driving. It will not be about their relationship. It's about his driving and the choices he made on that day. So we need to all focus on that particular point. And whether or not the Belias supported the Grazianos after, I think that's fine. I think that's great. That's what they did. But that doesn't take away from this defendant's actions. What he did on the 26th is what he did. And that can't be changed by anything else. There was a mention that he was the only minor of the three. And of course he was the only minor of all three, but we should all be aware of that he was a professional driver. So it's not as if this is the first time he was behind any type of high performance car. Lastly, I, I
profoundly kind of nervy, personally, that anyone would stand here and say what John Graziano would have wanted to happen and what he'd like to see, because unfortunately he can't be here to speak for himself. So I think that was a little bit nervy. I don't know that I can agree, while I agree with the characterization that it's a tragedy for both families, I don't know that I agree with the characterization of the word accident. I think it's true that the consequences of the accident were unintended, but I think the accident itself was caused by a series of conscious volitional decisions. I, I'm pleased with some of the things that I've seen and heard that Nick has done since then. I think by definition you have to grow up after something like this happens. I think when he was, before this happened, he probably, like most 17-year-olds, was in need of some maturing, and I think this situation will have to mature you much quicker as you deal with all of the things that happen in the aftermath of this kind of situation. And I've seen signs that that's the case uh, from some of the testimony of what people have said and what I've seen um, in the letter that he wrote. Uh, and in some of the things that I've heard uh, from the folks that are here on his behalf. But at the same time, I can't take away the, the serious nature of the offense, the serious injuries that occurred, and the fact, as I said, that if different decisions were made at, at that point, in those moments leading up to that accident, we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be having to have this conversation. And, um, Council, if you'll present your client at the podium. There's uh, a number of things that I need to address as far as the sentencing is concerned, and I'm, I'm going to try and do that uh, as I move forward. I am going to place uh, Mr. Balea on five years of probation. I do think that there needs to be uh, a significant number of conditions. It's interesting that the family suggested that he do 500 hours of community service, because in thinking about this case leading up to it, that's exactly the number that I had in mind. Five years of probation, that is 100 hours um, a year. And if you break that down, that's basically a little over eight hours a month. And the thought is, is that he'll spend one full day every month working in some positive framework, whether it's with the, the brain research for the National Wave or some other um, suitable community service uh, endeavor to, to complete those 500 hours. And under these circumstances, the court believes that it would be appropriate to withhold adjudication in this case. On the other issue, the issue of incarceration, I, I <laughs> cannot be quite as understanding in this situation. You know, it's one thing to say I'm sorry, it's even one thing to mean it, and I do believe that he's sincere. And I have a lot of people standing in front of me on a lot of days that say they're sorry, and I think Hopefully, I've developed some level of expertise in actually being able to tell whether they're sincere or not. And I believe that he is. I believe his family is. Um, and I believe that, that there is a, a sincere apology and a sincere desire to change things. But <laughs> saying you understand and saying that things will be different is not the same as actually understanding that there are consequences for what you do in these circumstances. And he has to understand, even if it's for the... Mr. Graziano is going to be imprisoned in what he's dealing with for some period of time. The, as was pointed out by his family, the time that Nick may spend incarcerated um, is, is going to pass, and it's going to be gone. And years from now, it'll be a, a forgotten memory, but I'm not sure that John is going to be in the same position or have the same opportunity as far as that's concerned. But for him to understand there are consequences, for everyone else out there that ever 18, 20 years old is thinking of doing this kind of thing. The system has to say that when you, you engage in this kind of behavior and there are the kind of consequences that there are in this case, that something is, is going to have to be done to show people to say this is not acceptable. Uh, I am going to withhold as I indicated, but I am going to impose a period of incarceration. I'm going to impose eight months in the Pinellas County Jail. Um, he gets credit for the day that he has in. The sentence will begin immediately. He'll be taken into custody. That county jail sentence will be as a condition of the five years of probation.